All right. Hi, everyone. Thank you very much for joining us on another uh, Wallaroo Community Tech Talk. Uh, today, we're going to uh, step through and deep dive into using MLflow uh, to deploy machine learning models in Wallaroo. And so really, again, you know, everything we do at Wallaroo is about getting your machine uh, learning models into production and not just, you know, uh, you know, getting them into production, but getting them into production really fast. Uh, also, you know, bringing the ability to scale. And also, once you're in production, making sure that the, the models are, you know, returning that effort that has been put into them back to the business. So, you know, bringing the capabilities of monitoring, uh, you know, validating those models uh, and then observability as well. And so if you're uh, joining us for the first time, we have a number of uh, videos and content on our YouTube channel. And uh, we keep uh, these community tech talks uh, every two weeks. And so uh, we'll have other topics, uh, again, relevant to ML in production. And, uh, and so we'll, we'll keep that going for the audience. And we always love to hear uh, from our audience as well. Uh, you know, if they, if there's any specific topics that are top of mind, uh, obviously LLMs are top of mind right now. We are working on uh, uh, content for that as well. So, you know, please stay tuned. My name is Martin Bald. I am the community manager for wallaroo.ai. And uh, I love uh, engaging with uh, practitioners, data scientists uh, in ML engineers uh, in the ML up space. And so great to have everybody uh, on the call. And uh, also if you're watching this on the recorded video as well. So yeah, uh, thanks for taking the time to join us. I'm gonna hand over to my colleague uh, who is much smarter than me on this topic. Uh, so Aman, if you wanna take it away from here. Thank you so much, Martin. Thanks for um, providing this opportunity to um, show how we use MLflow here at Wallaroo to deploy models um, for, for all the users um, and our customers here. Um, my name is Aman Preet Kaur. I go by Aman and I, have a, I am a solutions engineer at Wallaroo since last September. And it's really exciting to work here. So I'm, I'm very happy. And um, so let's uh, uh, dive into the topic. So we are going to, like I mentioned, we're going to talk about using ML flows to ML flow to use, um, show how we deploy these models in Wallaroo. So just starting with a little bit of introduction on MLflow, what exactly is it? It's it's an open source platform, uh, which basically goes through the whole machine learning life cycle, starting from training the code, writing the code, and all the way to the production. So there are four components to it, uh, which are tracking projects, models, as well as registry. So I'll start with the very first one, give you a very quick introduction about all of them, and then focus on the one we actually use here at Wallaroo. So for the tracking, what exactly it is? It is a component for API or UI for logging parameters, code versions, and metrics for the training data um, for a given data scientist or user who is, who is working on a particular code. So all these parameters and metrics are stored um, in a new experiment or let's say log format. And this is, again, it's all for the training data. So it's essentially a centralized repository for metadata for training sessions within an organization so that multiple users can take a look at the same data and train it and still have exactly the same results. So that's the main idea behind tracking. And then projects is, this is uh, basically what it does is it enables multiple users to reproduce the results from that training model. And again, basically package it in a format so that all the results are reproducible. So this is again, uh, like a packaging format for the training data so that any users on any particular environment um, can run the same code can train it and still reproduce the results. And all this is logged here in these projects. Okay, so then going over to the next part, which is model, here is where we talk about actually the model deployment. So this is a model package, which is essentially just like projects, but instead of training data, this is for the actual model itself. So the model that a user is training or user has trained here, that particular model is saved in a certain format, which will, contain information about artifacts and you know the requirements and everything that is needed to run that model. It is stored in a certain format and then 
any user can actually run this model and deploy this model wherever they want to. And maybe you already got a hint that this is the component that we are actually using in Wallaroo. And more MLflow registry is basically if you want to use this MLflow model format and you want to save it, uh, register it somewhere, and then so that you can pull it back later and deploy it in your choice of environment. So that is what the last component is. So, so this is just a quick intro to all the components of MLflow as you see that it's, it's a whole um, life cycle. And Martin, can you please go to the next slide? Yeah, so, and yeah, here, uh, the next one, sorry. Yes, so we are focusing on the MLflow models, as I mentioned. So what you're seeing here is I was just saying that uh, what this component does, it stores the particular model for, for the user in the standard format where you will have this particular directory or a folder, in this case, my model, and then you will have um, this little artifact here, ML model, which will have all the information about what kind of prerequisites are there. Like the model is um, saved in a pickle format and you have a Conda YAML file, uh, which has all the requirement for Conda as well as Python environment and requirements.txt, which will have all the libraries that you need um, for this particular model to run. So this is like a complete package. So what a user can do, take this standard format, which was created using MLflow models part, and then containerize it, for example, using Docker, and register it somewhere. For example, on GitHub or on cloud, anywhere, like any, any place of your choice. And then you can use that registered image or model, which is registered, this model is registered as an image, for example, on GitHub, and use that to deploy in your production environment. And that's essentially what we do here at Wallaroo. So for example, you, we containerize a given model using Docker and then register it on GitHub. We can do it on cloud too. And then we use Wallaroo to deploy it. So this is essentially just like a very small walkthrough. And what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to actually switch to a demonstration notebook just to show you an example of a model that we have already containerized and registered on GitHub. And I'm just going to pull that model image and deploy in Wallaroo. Okay, so um, I will start by sharing my screen here. Okay, can you? see uh, my screen. Yeah, got it. Okay, perfect. So what you're seeing here is, um, so this is a Wallaroo's instance, like for example, this. Um, so I have um, my own instance. And then what you're seeing here is just, this is like, for example, uh, an example workspace. And for each workspace, we have different pipelines. So the whole idea of workspaces is that uh, you can, put certain models in a given uh, workspace so that everything is organized in a way. So um, the basic thing to start with Wallaroo is we'll start with workspaces. So uh, before going into this particular notebook, let me give you a little bit of overview of the model that we're going to run here. So it is basically um, a model which has two components. Um, it's a stats model, uh, which would uh, basically um, run um, an inference uh, or a prediction whether a day is a good day to bike or not. And then the second component is post process, which actually calculates a Z score, which basically is a way of telling you whether what is the probability of riding or like taking the bike out on that particular given day, given that these are the things in the environment, like how is the sun and how is the temperature, weather, and all that kind of information. We'll go into it in more details here. So in the very beginning, what we are doing here is we are just importing a lot of libraries and Wallaroo. Um, so this is running in Wallaroo, but you can even do it from your own local notebook and you just have to install Wallaroo. Um, so just like Wallaroo SDK, you can use that. And then um, you connect to the Wallaroo um, client using this. And like, for example, because right now I'm in the Wallaroo environment, I can just use this unless like, otherwise you'll have to have your credentials. If you have the community license um, or enterprise license, you will use your credentials to log into Wallaroo client. And so this is your connection. 
And this is where we are setting up the workspaces and pipelines. So like I mentioned, workspace is just like this um, folder or this area where you are putting your information about a given model and you will set up the pipelines, uh, which will take the model information and then deploy it. So this is just an organization step here. So defining these things, and I'm just going to call it demo for MLflow workspace and similar for the pipeline name. So I'm just defining these pipelines. And this is where the very first step, which is very important for an MLflow model to be deployed in Wallaroo comes into place. So what we need to do is we need to define something called input schema. So what does that mean? So you have this input data for this particular model. So for this input data, you have all these features on which your output is dependent and you have to define the data type of each feature. For example, in this it's temperature, holiday, working day, wind speed. So you have to define basically what kind of data type is in there and you call it the input schema. And this is what we're defining for the first model, which is the inference model, the stats model. And then, uh, um, the second one, so sorry, this is the forecast uh, stats model. And then for the second one, which is the post-processing that basically calculates the statistical probability uh, that just has one column in it. And so that is the mean and that goes as um, that, again, you have to define the data type. So remember that the input of this particular model goes, um, produces an output, which is also the input of the second model. And so we are defining these inputs here, the schemas. And now the next step is let's pull those image images, which we just talked about that they would have just turned on GitHub for us for both the models. So this is the stats model, the forecast one, and this is the post-processing model, which is basically the statistical probability. And so you are just pulling in the information and from GitHub registry. And the important step here is, so you already connected to Wallaroo client and you are just going to, going to use this function called register underscore model underscore image and provide the name as well as the image um, URL um, to that particular model. And then you configure it you are going to tell Wallaroo that, okay, this is configured in an ML flow format. And so it is going to require you to provide an input schema as well as output schema. Input schema, we already defined how the input data went into the stats model. And the output is essentially the input to the second model because that's going to produce one output here. Um, and then we define the same thing for the post-processing model, the second one. So here input is one and output is one. So basically input and the output schema are essentially exactly the same. So this is, this is one step, like you define schemas, then you register your model image. Um, and um, after that, now you have registered the image, you just add that as a model step. So you have these two models, like stats and the post-processing, you're adding them to the pipeline that we generated above. Remember, I was talking about pipelines, that that pipeline is the one which will deploy um, your model information and then run the inferences. So registering the model, adding the model step, and now comes the deployment part. So this here that you're seeing here is the deployment configuration. So this is this can be as simple as just like pipeline.deploy, but if you want to be uh, careful about the resources that you're using and you want to make sure that you are just using the right amount of resources, not more, not less. So you can just actually even configure it with some custom CPUs and memories and all that information you can provide. And when you actually deploy it using the pipeline, you can provide this configuration in here. And so after that, you deploy it. And since I already deployed it and you can see that it is already deployed and we are ready to run the inferences. And so you can also check the status of your pipeline. It says running, that's all great. And now I'm going to run the inference by using a file where the data are stored. So like I said, this is basically just the bike day evaluation uh, based on the parameters you just said, where, which we defined in the input schema and it's in JSON format. So this, this particular command will take JSON format um, and it will produce these results. And you see that it's a lot of information. What it is telling you is it has like all these features. And so basically, seven different scenarios. So you are getting your output 
for all these seven different scenarios, which is basically the z-score um, as the probability uh, for the bike day. So after you're done, after you say that, okay, I got my inferences in, you can undeploy that pipeline and give the resources back to the cluster. And then um, basically that's, that's it. So you see, it was a very simple process. Like you register the model image, you add that model step, you deploy the pipeline and run the inferences. So very, very efficient and um, a great procedure here. So um, this is all. And uh, basically the takeaway here is that we can use uh, different kind of custom format models um, in Wallaroo for deployment. Like there is a lot of native support, but if not, we can use MLflow to containerize them and still run inferences. So that's all that I have to say. Thank you, Martin, back to you. Thanks, Ivan. Essay, do you have any questions or can we help? Uh, yeah, I actually have used MLflow in um, Microsoft like and Databricks for deploying some models. And uh, I was just, Wondering what you meant by um, ML projects that can be used in different environments, because you mentioned that uh, they can be used in any environment. So is that the Dockerized version? Is that why it can be run on? Uh, is that why it's environment uh, independent? Let's put so it that way. MLflow has its own UI. So like, for example, in the, in the projects, um, you can actually it stores in a given repository within MLflow and you can access it. Um, I don't have, I don't remember it on top of my head, like how do you access it, but um, you can do it local. You can even save it locally or you can go um, on a cloud. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I can get back to you uh, with that answer, but that's the that's best. Basically, yeah, you, you can, save all that information and um, access it from anywhere. Yeah, we it, we also have, uh, and we will follow up with you, uh, Sage. Uh, so uh, what we also have is, I think uh, on our webinar last month, uh, we did, uh, you know, using Azure Databricks uh, as well. So I can send you the link to that recording. Uh, and that actually shows you you know, if you're in that sort of Azure Databricks environment, uh, you know, how you can, you know, make sure that you have that continuity from, you know, doing your testing, experimentation, and right through to production and uh, and how, you know, Wallaroo sort of fits into that, right? And so we have uh, <clears throat> a number of sort of SDK. So there's different ways in which you can, you know, you know work with the product. So we have the UI, uh, uh, we have the uh, SDK, and then we also have APIs that plug into other technologies that folks have invested in or are using. And so it's important to make sure that we, you know, plug into uh, those environments so that folks aren't sort of going through one stage of, uh, you know, pre-production and then they have to jump out to another tool and do learning in a different environment. So we help provide that continuity through those APIs and that SDK. So like a man mentioned, you can, you can, Bring your own uh, notebook uh, you know, to this, so you, you know you don't have to use uh, the one that's built into the product. Thank Any you. other questions? <laughs> uh, no, I'm not, I don't have any other questions. Okay. Okay. Cool. Uh, yeah. What we uh, share my screen here, and then what we can do. Yeah, so uh, what you can do is uh, if you want to go through this yourself, uh, we actually have this uh, tutorial uh, up on our docs uh, page. And so we have this as well as uh, a whole uh, host of other ones uh, that um, uh, you can uh, you know work with. And as I mentioned, uh, we have these SDK guides. So if you're using you know, Databricks, SageMaker, uh, et cetera, uh, you can uh, you know uh, go through these steps as well and plug them into your environment. You can also do this through the, uh, Aman mentioned, we have the community edition. So the community edition is free, doesn't expire. So you're not in a pressure situation where it's like, oh, I've got 30 days to use this or it expires. You know, it's it's unlimited. 
And the other important thing is that, you know, this is pure for community. This is for folks to get hands on and get learning. We don't add you to any sales list. And so that's not the intent of this. This is to connect with the community, uh, help folks learn and, uh, you know, how they can get their models to production. And also at the same time, it gives us feedback. You know, there's things that we do right. There's things that we can do better. And so, you know, giving us that feedback on, hey, you know what, this, you know, doesn't work or it'd be great if you did this. And I, I have a direct line into engineering and the product team so I can give that feedback. So, uh, yeah. And uh, if you have any uh, need for support, uh, you can uh, contact me uh, uh, through you know, on LinkedIn and uh, you can email me at martin.bold at wallaroo.ai as well. And so I'm really happy to help. And like I said, I've I've been in DevRel uh, for a while uh, and uh, you know I, I love connecting with the community and just seeing how folks you know use that brain trust to solve problems uh, with technology and so uh, i love engaging with uh, folks as well thank you very much for your time i say <laughs> thank you for joining no, us. i have i have one more question so yeah. sorry um this might sound a bit uh naive uh, <laughs> so what is exactly wallaroos are you like the likes of databricks or what, what kind of platform is this? What's the purpose of this platform? Right, so great question. So the purpose of our platform is to get, uh, it's ML production. So when you you come from, uh, you know, your experimentation ideation phase, the challenge that companies have, and you know, there's a Gartner stat, I think like over 80% of uh, companies uh, fail to get their models into production. And when they do, about 10% of those only pay back ROI. So what we do is uh, our platform helps you get those into production. So you we have model conversion. So you can, uh, you know, uh, bring, you know, whatever model uh, you, uh, you know, do the ideation experimentation. And uh, we use, uh, you know, Onyx TensorFlow. <clears throat> and so as a man showed, you just, you know, you, we create the workspace, you you uh, you know upload that model. And then the deployment takes a matter of seconds. Uh, you know, I think in the man's one, it took like 135 seconds. In a lot of cases, that can take days or weeks. <clears throat> There's a, I saw an, a, like an AI camp uh, session coming up that get to production in two weeks. And uh, it's that's how long it traditionally takes. If you can get up to production in seconds, uh, that's a huge cost savings and time savings. So what we do is, we are the ML production uh, platform for companies. And we run on Azure, uh, AWS, and GCP. And for the enterprise edition, you can do uh, a, you know on-premises as well in your data center. And uh, we also do edge and uh, AI on the edge as well. So that's, that's who we are. Uh, okay, I have another question. So since you are for production, like would, does your platform also provide tools for monitoring? Yes, yes, we do. So we have uh, 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 tools for uh, monitoring and observability. And um, so inside here, we have things like uh, you can do uh, uh, you can do sort of A-B testing and shadow deploy in production. So uh, in that sense, if you have another model that you want to test against, uh, you know, you can do like an A-B test uh, and you know, validate you might find that, oh, this other model is performing better than the one that's in production. And what you can actually do there is you can then hot swap that model in production. So you don't have to take down your production environment. You can actually do that hot swap on the fly and you don't see any uh, delay uh, in uh, you know that environment. The other thing that uh, we have as well is we call it assays. So observability uh, for us uh, is... <clears throat> Uh, is uh, being able to do that uh, observability, and that's a huge uh, component uh, of you know, you know what we do. Because, like I said, once you're in production, that's not the end of it. You got to make sure that you know these models continue to uh, produce, that they're not drifting, and you can recognize drift and take. You know, be proactive in your actions against that. And so, there's a, a great tutorial in here about you know managing uh, you know that uh, uh, assay uh, environment uh, and we've got uh, videos uh, on this as well and so you can build your assay uh, and you know there's a lot of, sort of flexibility 
uh, around this as well, as you can see from this quick sort of video uh, snip. So, yeah, we do that end to end production right through to observability and then closing the loop as well with uh, the rest of the ML team. There is also another community talk, right, Martin? You did for essays, as particularly uh, yep. with one, I guess. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so, let me. Let me go here. So uh, we've got. Uh, so we did one uh, last month. So it's uh, detecting uh, ML model drift and acting on it. So I, I can share this one with you as well, and I'll share the link to the uh, tutorial also. So now, like I said, you can go try these yourself uh, and uh, can get some hands on. And please, yeah, reach out to us. Let us know how we can help and uh, uh, along that uh, that journey. Thank you very much, Martin. And and you also, uh, I'm on Amen. for the presentation. Awesome. Great questions. And yeah, there, there's no such thing as a, a silly question or naive question. So yeah, yeah we're, <laughs> so we're here for, yeah, we're here to help you. Yeah, because there's so many tools and um, companies now and platforms. It's just sometimes I get vertigo about like who's doing what, what is this used for? It, it is, yeah, because, you know, it's, I think that's the important part of, you know, what we, uh, what we try and do is we don't just get you to production. We want to make sure that you have that whole tool remit that, you know, keeps those models running. Uh, and you know, and helps you scale super fast inferencing, so you're not burning up, you know, cloud cost, and then the observability piece as well. So your ML engineers and your data scientists can collaborate and work together and communicate and make sure that there's no one sort of dropping the ball and there's no, uh, you know, uh, gaps in that uh, process. Good. I don't have any other questions. Awesome. Is this the end of it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll uh, I'll stop the recording now. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, as I say, uh, great to have you. And uh, we will follow up with you with those things. And uh, and yeah, hopefully we can get to see you back and tell your colleagues about it and uh, your your friends and everyone. So we'd love to get more people on these uh, tech talks as well. Yeah, thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank Take you. care.